So hey guys, we're back. It's part two and we're still talking Dragon Age. And it's being my favorite game of all times. I can talk about it for hours. And well, it's it'll be easier if I can like discuss it with you. Maybe like in like online type of thing, like streaming or something. But um, we don't have that option. I don't have that option so we're just I'm just you're just listening to me um, telling stories so anyways uh, <clears throat> we were talking about the social aspect of the game and as I told you when I'm creating a character for Dragon Age I put a lot of effort into uh, her and it's always her I'm never playing a dude uh, into her social life. And since we're talking social life of the character, let's talk about the companions. Let me just quickly turn on my list of the companions. And so, let's talk about them one by one. Like, you know, just... We would regularly do. So, uh, let's start from the very beginning. Uh, it's when you are a when you're playing the same character as I always do, which is a mage. Uh, most of the times, it's a mage. So you would have a sister that is a mage and a brother who is a warrior. As uh, you, in any case, you would. And uh, the fact that you're playing a mage means that at the very first 20 minutes, depending on how long it takes, 10 minutes of the game, and we're not taking uh, two hours of creating your character's face before that. Um, so in the first 10 minutes of the game, that means your mage sister would die. And that's basically everything you would know about her. Her name is Bethany, and uh, she dies. If you are playing uh, and your brother stays, and if you're playing a rogue or a warrior, that's the opposite situation. That means your brother, uh, Carver, died in the first 10 minutes, and Bethany stays, and if you're a mage, then Carver stays. So, um, I do like uh, Bethany a lot more than Carver. And if I, I was playing a warrior and rogue few times, so I have I had an experience of interacting with her as well. So um, she's more fun. Um, I think she's more likable. Like they made the sister better than the brother, because uh, at well my opinion in general is that Carver is boring he's like boring yeah and also what i don't like is that he's like he's scared of everything he's like let's do the right thing let's 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 talk to templars <laughs> what if they find us and that's lame so i don't like him as a companion and uh, in general but he's not the worst one, at least. Like, if we're talking companions with two-handed swords, then Carver is a lot better than Fenris. So, uh, but we'll come to this point. So, Bethany, I think she's nice. And um, I feel sad when she dies. And I feel sad if I'm playing a warrior or a rogue. I feel sad when she um, goes to a circle or becomes a great warden so anyways um, Carver is the same I don't I don't like playing with you know with that character in the party too much um, so uh, yeah this is all for relatives oh not companions but still relatives I think their mom's fine she's completely a normal person I the creators did a great job of creating a relatable, you know, 
a real like mom who actually cares about her children and does some stupid shit as well like all people would do because you know parents are not always perfect and are not always right they write for the most part but you know they do make mistakes like any other people then there's an uncle who is bleh. Who is again? Uh, it's a relatable situation. He is like into gambling and just you know in general he's not a really nice person. He was always jealous of his sister, and that happens too in real life. So I think you can relate to that to that person, and I think you can totally understand the situation that was behind that character. And I don't hate them. Like I don't him i don't hate him i'm um, totally fine with the existence of that character even though he's portrayed as a, like a bad side character um i still don't feel bad about him okay back to the companions let's start with one of everyone's favorites companions everyone's everyone's favorite in general mr popular varick um Varric is is like something special. Being a LARPer, I I always had a thought of like people playing my favorite characters of like who can play who and stuff like that. And what we all like all me and my friends all who played and who are fans of Dragon Age World, we agreed on one thing, no one can play Varric. You cannot play Varric. You should be Varric in real life, like to play Varric. You should be the same, like as a person. And I don't know anyone who even resembles Varric even a bit. I think he is the greatest companion. I take him when I play. I take him in a party anywhere I go. Um, he is both like good as a you know as a rogue one of the best rogues in the game and he is great as a companion like the jokes he does he makes the the comments the dialogues with him are great and it's easy to understand what uh what to choose in a dialogue for him to be like to be your to become your friend and it's just fun and he's all sarcastic and if your character is being sarcastic you make great friends and it's just awesome and you know and he he makes it so much better like everything so much better and easier in the game and i think varic is just the best companion ever created in dragon age setting and that that's a good you know that's a good reason that's the, like they put that they put him uh, in the third part too for a good reason. Not only for the plot reason, like he was there, but also for the fact that he's one of the best companions ever. So yeah, I think Varric is amazing, and I um, yeah, I'm completely happy that he that he's still there for the third part, and I hope he will be there for the fourth part. And I feel, I feel kind of sad about the fact that not the second part. I'm fine with the second part, but the fact that in the third part you cannot romance him, because you know. In the third part, you have an option of playing a dwarf, like a female dwarf. So that would be cool and that would be like that would be interesting in the least and that would be super fun to be able to romance Varric with a female dwarf inquisitor uh, you know but that's you know that's just up to our imagination that is just left with us and our imaginations and I've seen few comics on that I've seen few uh, fan arts and it's sad that you cannot do that in the game but we're talking second part now so just forget about that forget about that i know some people um feel sad that you cannot romance varic as a hawk and i kind of agree 
but you know at the same um it's still it's it's a bit different for the second part and in the second part it's not you know uh there is no reason behind that there is no situation not enough plot to for it to be for Barry to be romanceable and um, for Hawk is more reasonable to romance other characters than Varric. So um, so yeah and again for the third part I feel sad about that. Um, anyways, he is my favorite one of my favorite companions. There are actually like two favorite companions I have in the second part. And so, um, yeah, and the second one's Anders, but that's for the other reason. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, moving on our list, we have Isabella, um, who is, I think, a good companion as well. I'm not a huge fan of her, but I don't dislike her. I like her. She is funny. She is open. She is, like, outgoing. Uh, her quests are normal. It's again, it's easy to understand what she likes and what she dislikes, and it's easy to make friends with her. And I like her outfit. I like her appearance. She's a good looking woman. I have never romanced her, but I know friends who play male characters and who do romance her, and they say it's fun and it's like hot and everything. And I understand, like, her body type's hot. She's, like, strong, muscle, muscular girl, feminine at the same time. And that is amazing. That is uh, what I'm trying to make out of myself. Kind of. Well, yeah. So, anyways. And it's cool. It's, like, she is uh, a cool companion. I... When forming a party, I still would prefer Varric to her. But sometimes I would still take her with me, just because uh, it's a different. She's a different type of rogue, and sometimes I need dual weapons. And also, it's it's fun to listen to her dialogues with other companions as well, especially with Evelyn. And we'll get to her soon. So yeah. Um, I would say it's always better to, well, it was that Kunari situation that you have uh, there in the act two. It's always better to make friends with Isabella, I think, so she would come back and you would not lose an awesome companion like that. And I, you know, I feel like hmm, she is really, really in certain ways she's really relatable it's not like you meet people like that on daily basis especially like fantasy pirates and shit uh, but um she's relatable because it's like we all have that one female friend who is really outgoing and a really free um when it comes to her uh intimate life and she is not afraid to talk about it. And she's like, there is some things that you can learn from her. Um, and uh, you may not be really like a huge fan of her lifestyle decisions, but sometimes you look at her and you're kind of even jealous because like you wish you could have been free like that. So yeah, we all have that friend, and Isabella is obviously a character, so she's an exaggerated ver version of that friend, but um, it's still relatable, it's still there, and it still is the case. So okay, we're moving to our other companion, and that would be Evelyn, who I just mentioned. And I don't really like her as a companion, she's too, too good too lawful to say if we're comparing D, &D system she's like lawful good and i don't like lawful goods in general because they are too boring she's boring like she's super boring the only thing that i like about evelyn is that 
again that act two situation with Donic when you need to help them build their relationship and this is all like super cute and super like she's a little shy and everything and that doesn't go well with her like tough uh, warrior woman appearance and she's like uh, oh, like date and she doesn't know what to do and you need to help her and everything and that's that's actually when you bring Isabella with you because that's that would be super fun. Um, but yeah, that's really the only thing I like about her. Otherwise, she's boring. She's not. I'm not. I'm not like. I'm not. I'm not disliking her. I would still bring her with me because that's still a better option than Fenris. So um, yeah. Otherwise, she's just there. You know, there are, like, there are some companions, some characters that are just there. They just exist. You don't really care about them. You don't care, like, building friendship with them or just, you know, playing with them in general. But they're just there. Uh, it's like, again, that's relatable again. Because in, like, in real life, you, uh, you, you would have, like, a friend circle. You know, the people that you're close with and then there may be some people you're not that close with. They're still in your friend circle because they're someone's best friend or, uh, you know, just someone's friend, someone's cool with them. So someone brought them into your friend circle and you cannot, you know, not talk to them cause, or not even like not see them because they're there. But you don't care about them. They just sit there on in the like near you and no one actually cares about them that much someone brought that person just brought that person there and yeah they just exist <laughs> and this is the case here um uh, and here we go the most hated character for me ever in the whole in the whole dragon age uh, setting Fenris. I hate Fenris. I I don't know why. I just hate Fenris. I know a lot of girls are like fans of Fenris and they like to romance him and they like him in general and that's their favorite character and I've seen like tons of fan arts and fanfics and comics and you know things like that on Fenris with Fenris about Fenris and you know things like that. I hate Fenris. I first of all, I don't like those like victimized characters. And I know Anders has that that as well, but not that much as Fenris, because Fenris is all the time I was a slave. I am a slave you know, all those like vining and hating on mages and it and no matter what you say, no matter what you tell him in the dialogues, he dislikes you. It's like, it feels like no matter what you do, he hates you. This is why I like, I don't like him at all. I hate him. He just, and his appearance is weird. He's just weird in general. And maybe I'm not right. Like, you may like him and you may be a fan, but I am definitely not. I just don't like Fenris. I don't like. I never. I never take him with me. I never like even. I try to avoid to the to the max. I try to avoid the dialogues with Fenris, and I usually kill him in the end. <laughs> Cause I, I even when I tried to, I, I, I usually give a chance. I usually give a chance or two to all the characters, and Fenris was one of them. I gave that character a chance, and I tried to build a dialogue with him. I tried to make friends. I tried to take him in the party and everything, and that didn't end up any normal. Like seriously. Seriously, like he doesn't like anything I say, no matter how much I try, the relationship still goes bad, and I still have to kill him in the end. So, yeah, I hate Venerous. Let's move on. 
Here we go. Here we go. My sweetie, my favorite character, my favorite character ever, Anders. Anders, my Anders. <clears throat> I'm chill, I'm fine. Anders. Anders is amazing. Of course, he has like, he, he does have this like victimized thing too, but at the same time, he's still more more talkable than Fenris, for example. He's nice, and the fact that he's a healer makes it so much better. He's a nice person, he tries to help everyone, and of course there's justice that is, like, justice is mad, but even though he has that mad part, he's still a nice person, and he likes cats, and that's a, you know, that's a huge yes for me. And, um, I like to build a romance with Anders uh, as a character. That's really the only person, the only character I build a romance with, because he's super amazing. And then you help him, he helps you, and this is just, I don't know, he just has this charisma, I think, as a character that you cannot you know, resist, I guess. And... And that doesn't help that my boyfriend's really similar to him, as, like, character-wise. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, um, Ander is amazing, and I don't really agree with the decision of blowing up the church, but, and, um, me and my friends, we actually searched on purpose, uh, if there was a way in the game to avoid it, if there was a way around it, to not to actually blow the to stop Anders from doing that. But there is no way of it, so basically, yeah, I still supported him because uh, this is how I feel about romances in the in the Dragon Age setting i feel like you need to have this ending of like supporting your romance choice no matter what he or she does this is how i feel in real life and this is how i feel for like about the games because if you love a person you need to support him or her no matter what like you may agree that he or she is not right you may uh agree that they deserve some punishment or maybe like something's completely wrong but if you are if you promise that person to be with him or her till the end you need to keep that world you need to keep that word you need to be there um and so this is what actually pissed me uh in the third part because at least here like in the part two if you romance andres and at the end he needs to run away um you let him you don't kill him and you let him run away um uh, you can go with him like there is an option of running away with enders uh, which is not an option in the third part if you're romancing solace um you don't have that option at the end he just goes away and that pissed me like seriously you need to have that option. I know he's a god, but whatever. You still need to have that, like... Uh, that's just sad. Anyway, um, anyways, uh, Anders, if we're not counting uh, justice and, you know, all those crazy stuff he does, he's super cool and I think they could have played more uh, on the fact that you bring him home, at, well, in the act three, I think it happens. And it's not only him, it's in general, if you do have a romance with other character and you bring that character home to live with you, like there is a mom, Hoax, Hawk's mom, who is actually talking to him to hawk about marriage and you know setting settling and everything settling down and everything and i think 
they could have played around with it more and have a reaction from that mom on uh, whoever Hog bring to their house as his or her soulmate, romance, love, whatever. So yeah, that could be played on more, and I I would be happy if that had if that plot had that twist. Enough about Anders. I he is super cool, but and I can talk about him for hours. But we would not do that. We would not get super biased here. We, we did get biased here, but let's let's just move on. And our next companion is Meryl. I can like I don't feel completely happy about that companion. I um I think she's nice. But at the same time again, it's there's some kind of a problem with elves in this part. I just we don't seem to have an understanding. Like, the same as with Fenris, I don't understand what she wants, she don't understand what I'm trying to say to her. You know, it's like the dialogues never go well, it's always minus. So, Meryl, nice, stupid, and not understandable. That's all. That's all I can say. And as a mage, I don't feel like she's really useful in the battle. She had a really strange development um so yeah anyways um next uh next is uh sebastian sebastian is a character that i've played just a little bit with and he is he's a useful companion if you develop him right way you can make a death machine out of him with his bow and everything and um, he's a bit boring, the same as Aveline, because he's really like lawful good. And I, again, I'm not personally a fan of those. I'm more chaotic type of person, so yeah. But Sebastian is nice. He's again a good companion. Um, if you find, if you like, it's easy. Not like Zelfs. With him, it's easy to understand how to talk to him so he wouldn't get he would not get pissed at you so yeah basically i like sebastian in my party but again it it's it's not my most preferable character because uh why would you have two two shooters in one party when you already you you already have one and that one is varic because like well, come on, would you like change Sebastian? Would you change Varric for Sebastian? I, I don't think anyone would do that. So, yeah, uh, this is it for most of for most of it, I think. This is it for the companions. There is also Talis, who is in DLC, uh, but I. I played it only like once and I don't know much about her character and I'm not a huge fan of it again so I'm just a boring biased person seriously you guys I yeah. there is a like certain number of characters in each game I like and out of that circle, I either hate or don't care. So anyways, um, actually, to be honest, this part is uh, the most intense for it, uh, for the companions and for my opinions in them, because in the first and in the third part, I don't have any, like, uh, characters that I have that much, like, that strong feel the same strong feelings on as for this part as like especially when it comes to disliking a character i don't really have characters that i dislike that much there are no characters i dislike in the first part and i kind of dislike sarah in the third part i just don't get you know it's it again it comes from real life because in real life there are people like her like her character you know they have like 
their own sense of humor and they're just random and I just don't get them and I don't like them so yeah basically it is uh, it is it so anyways you guys um, it, this is it for Dragon Age 2 we might uh, mention it a few times more in the other videos when we're gonna talk about the other games or maybe the other parts of Dragon Age anyways uh, this is it for today I'll see you next time Bye.